Welcome back to The Forecast, brought to you by Headstorm, the show that teaches you how to engineer growth, uh, learning from industry experts, and providing you tactical steps that you can use tomorrow. Today, we're going to be listening to Rob Kelly, senior partner at Headstorm, and he is going to be talking to Dan Ambrosiak. Dan is the VP of IT at World Global, who is using their data to address the driver shortage in an unexpected way while bringing consumer level logistics expectations into the B2B world. Dan, it's so good to have you. Let's get started. Obviously, we're uh, Headstorm's working with the World Group in uh, in addressing some of the driver loyalty um, ideas uh, that that you have come up with and that the company has come up with, and uh, some of those uh, current initiatives around driver loyalty uh, I know are pretty exciting, and our teams are having a really uh, fun time uh, working with you on uh, so. Things like just uh, supporting the driver's day, uh, understanding where they need to be, when they need to be, uh, being able to coordinate uh, those uh, events uh, during the course of the business day, I know is very important. I know documentation is very important uh, in terms of um, receipts for pickup, uh, bills of lading, uh, the documentation uh, required for pickups. Um, th those are all important uh, uh, requirements that a driver needs to have to be able to do their job. So uh, having that information uh, using technology, uh, uh, mobile apps uh, in some cases could be really advantageous. I know that trip history is uh, super important to drivers, understanding what the schedule is for cargo to arrive uh, before pickup. And then uh, as uh, we all know that uh, the deal in this industry, uh, a lot of times those, those original times uh, and expectations are not met. So being able to deal with um, any sort of change in the trip, uh, the change in the pickup times and having visibility of that is super important to drivers. And then the last thing, uh, as you mentioned, uh, communicating with, uh, with world group staff is uh, very important. So creating uh, an easy means for drivers to communicate with dispatchers, fleet managers, and other important roles at the world group, um, I can imagine is something that would make uh, life much uh, better for, uh, for, for the world group and its drivers. No doubt, and, and I liked how you opened that up with, you know, we're referring to this with driver loyalty because you know, in our market and the challenges we're facing today, uh, keeping drivers is not easy, right? It's a competitive market, whether that be pay or the choice, the choice of loads that they're getting. So we're trying to build some tools for this app that make their life easier. At the end of the day, uh, all these drivers are business owners. You know, they're operating uh, a single truck or multiple trucks. So they want to be better business owners, you know, giving them tools that you know, like me and you are used to on our iPhones or our Androids, you know, everything's at your fingertips. And I think that's key to be able to extend those types of tools to them. Uh, it's key also to kind of develop our fleet manager into that person that's really managing the relationship with the driver. There's so many things that can come up in a day's work with service defects or, you know, nuances that are changing the delivery location um, or timing. So, you know, normally all that stuff's handled through a phone call or email. So if we can streamline some of that communication to the back office that's supporting these 1300 drivers uh, and let the fleet manager focus on their relationship and making sure that the world group's making the proper revenue per, per truck, making sure that the driver is meeting all the safety standards, making sure the driver is most happy with with what World Group is is providing them, so that's what we want a fleet manager to focus on. Yeah, uh, that's fantastic, Dan. And as exciting as uh, these features are that we that we're talking about, uh, I know that uh, the World Group has a very long 
uh, trail uh, and forecast of, of things that you want to build in the future too. I, I know right. uh, just generally speaking in the industry, some of the things that I've heard uh, include um, the ability to uh, plan their week. So as opposed to a driver just having a trip or, or two trips, maybe three at the most for a particular day, to be able to string those together with some form of route optimization and uh, really schedule optimization for the driver. Um, also, uh, digital freight matching, I know, is becoming really popular, trying to automate that matching process. And, uh, and I know there's some things from a driver loyalty uh, perspective that would be really exciting for the drivers to give them some choices around uh, what freight they could go um, uh, haul. And then um, uh, last thing uh, I think is just modeling some of the best practices that are taking place manually currently in your organization. I know you have some people who are doing some great things and there, there might be some things that could be identified um, with, uh, the, to be used by technology to help improve uh, those processes and, um, and, and as a result, uh, improve the driver's experience. No doubt. You know, I think there's a lot of these things that TMS systems offer with load planning, route optimization, but I think I think the lack in today's technologies is they don't push that to the to the to the mobile device for the driver. So we want to kind of shift that movement to where in our very, very near future, the driver has that visibility in front of them to make decisions to select loads you know at the end of the day you want to make it conducive to their life to their truck um, you know and really let them model the revenue that they could potentially make for the week let them plan the following week's loads you know that's important there's a lot of the back office that's doing that for them today but again to make that that type of trip attractive uh, we feel that giving that type of choice to the driver is going to be the utmost importance to to really scaling the way we want. Well, you know, and you mentioned earlier, Dan, the uh, the proliferation of uh, the mobile phones, mobile devices, right? We right. everyone has that expectation from kind of the consumer world that th there's no reason why the same expectations shouldn't be in the workplace as well. And so now, in in these B two B functions. Um, People expect that automation and those great tools and functions and features that uh, um, make their jobs easier and, and allows them to do more in the world of, uh, you know, cognitive thinking and being in uh, being intellectual as opposed to just doing more menial tasks. So that's exciting. That's great to hear. It is, and it's. I know we've both been in uh, logistics in sh some shape of our life for 20 plus years and i, I yeah. sometimes scratch my head how far behind uh the industry is compared to the consumer market i mean when you can compare what you can do on your phone with orders and tracking your order from amazon uh, we're not there yet you know but i think it sets kind of a standard that we all need to get to to provide visibility or better visibility on uh, international freight Great insight, Dan. The driver shortage is something that has been a headline for a while now, and one way to combat that is through driver loyalty. By giving them the ability to plan their weeks in advance while having visibility into selecting loads, route optimization, and more all through a mobile app that gives control back to the drivers. We'll tell you how to build a foundation of data next. Uh, not only in the shipping and logistics uh, space, but in other verticals, uh, I know a lot of our, the Headstorm client base is really interested in the centralization and aggregation of data. So um, at, at this point, most companies have, you know, pillar systems, whether it be a CRM system, a TMS, uh, ERP, um, th th those systems are now in place and helping to automate kind of basic transactions that every business goes through. But what's interesting is um, 
there are correlations across those silos of data. There are ways to think through how you can help a customer better or how you can reduce expenses and, and make things more efficient. If you have the ability to analyze information across those different uh, functional areas of the business. And so that centralization and aggregation of data is uh, really, really popular right now from an engineering standpoint. You know, and, and then beyond the engineering aspects of it are, um, you know, you hear all the buzzwords today about machine learning and artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but really you have a dependency to first be able to, to put together, to centralize and aggregate data in a stable way that has integrity so that you can actually use that data for meaningful things such as AI, ML, and um, data science too, even more generally. Um, so that's, that's one of the things that um, I know uh, a lot of our clients are focused on and some of the things that we're working on together at the World Group. Um, so I don't know if you have any thoughts on that or, or other ways that you guys uh, may see that working or helping you in the future. Yeah, we, we do. And, and, you know, it's funny, everybody gets excited about AI and, and what you can do with robotics. But one thing we learned here is, you know, and I think you kind of said it, data integrity is the key. So, you know, we're taking a step back and focusing on our processes. We're building, we're actually building data ops teams that can kind of ensure, you know, the data is coming into our system the right way, whether that be through automation or manual input. But if that data is not uh, right or have the integrity that you expect, your customer tools, the driver app that we're talking about, your business intelligence tools, they're not going to be right. And, you know, that's the first thing that's going to drive your adoption, your usage down. So we're really focused on making sure that the data that's put into our customer portals and these apps are going to be right. You know, it, it it's so true that accurate data or data integrity is is you, you have to have that if you're going to step into this digital transformation world for sure. Yeah. One thing that we're focused on is a few years ago, we, you know, we decided to build our own customer portal and behind the scenes, you know, we got three or four line of business systems supporting all of our services. And, you know, each system kind of has their own database and how data is stored. So we took the approach to leverage APIs and in EDI and web services, and we're pushing that data to a single portal. And there's where there's where your ideal supply chain customer that's leveraging warehousing, trucking, and forwarding from us, they can see that data in one pane of glass. And that, that's pretty powerful. Uh, that simplifies things for their staff. And again, it, it minimizes on that back office communication because they now have one spot to go for that type of visibility. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Uh, that single pane of glass is such a crucial use case for your customers uh, because they don't want to be going back and forth from site to site or even worse, you know, from vendor to vendor to understand where their where their shipments are, uh, where uh, where their freight is. And uh, so that's that's fantastic that you guys have uh, really attacked that and um, and hopefully have some happy customers as a result. Um, let, let's talk about an, another area. Uh, so, so if we stay on that maturity curve for data, um, has has the World Group thought about uh, ideas around data science or ways that um, using data to automate certain events or certain notifications uh, for either your customers, your staff, or, or your drivers? Absolutely. You know the. The power behind all of these technologies too is is a data warehouse, and I know um, it's such a it's such a buzzword out there, but really it's these data warehouses, these data lakes. You know, if you can start building historical data in there, you know, there's your perfect candidate to you know start tracking patterns and and the same things that are asked or requested from our customers. So we want to take this to a point where we are using some AI to you know, predictive alerts or shipment statuses. Uh, these types of things are customers, our customers are looking for to be proactive. You know, they don't want to wait uh, after the fact when an event like that occurs. So, 
you know, there's your perfect use case for how uh, the world group is focusing on using AI to do some of these things. Great information. Thank you for that. More and more companies are realizing the value that comes from breaking through silos and aggravating all of their data into one place. Once all of that data is in together in a data warehouse or a data lake, it's possible to analyze and discover patterns that give predictive alerts and let you know where improvements need to occur. What benefits come from modern architecture? We'll cover that next. Um, I know something really, really big in your industry is the concept of proactive notifications. And uh, all parties that have uh, some form of role in, uh, in a particular shipment needing to be notified when something changes, uh, when something, and potentially when something goes wrong. Uh, I know that's very hard to do because there can be so many vendors and partners involved, uh, particularly uh, when a 3PL uh, is managing the freight. So talk a little bit about uh, kind of what your strategy is and how technology might help with some of the uh, proactive notification scenarios. Yeah, Rob, and it goes back to that that single pane of glass, right? You know, when you think about, you know, a, a customer that, that is manufacturing something over in Asia and the various suppliers and transportation methods to get that to the states, you know, it lands in a distribution center before it goes to the, the, the you know, the, the store shelf. You really want to be able to track uh, not just the container, but the SKUs inside of that container. A lot of these container commodities are, are landing in a warehouse and getting transloaded and, and broken out to other shipments. So you have to be able to track uh, all of that information from origin to destination. And that's what a lot of our big complex customers, that's, that's what they demand now. So we've been working on, um, you know, essentially an order management system that gives, gives them that single pane of glass to track something from the supplier through all the various uh, you know, modes of transportation, uh, starting at the factory and, and ending on that shelf. So you know, that, that has been key to us. That's a, a strategic move. That's something that some of our clients are actually willing to pay uh, for that service because they understand all the work efforts it takes their internal staffs to track that, you know, that type of information, maintain spreadsheets with all those SKUs, if we can put that into that that single pane of glass for them, it, it's a double win for them for visibility and staff efficiencies. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. And obviously, from a technical standpoint, there's the convergence of a lot of things you know that are taking place to uh, make that a reality for the customer. Um, you know, I know for us, we, we've done at Headstorm a lot of work with clients where. Um, that they've tried to uh, to evolve from the the traditional EDI transmissions that are coming in um, from various entities uh, uh, involved in a shipment, and uh, move to uh, more modern architectures, usually with some form of an API layer that is there. Um, and rather than moving uh, data through third parties, actually creating that hub for yourself. So you can take inbound messages from all your partners. You can send outbound messages to your partners and then, uh, and then obviously have that visibility to your customers, uh, whether they use you know, portals and, and tools that you provide or even send data back out to the customers uh, to integrate with systems that they're using to track their shipments. Because uh, obviously a lot of companies um, have those capabilities in their ERP systems, their own uh, transportation management solutions. And so that integration layer becomes really, really important. And uh, so I know at Headstorm, that's something that a lot of companies are focused on right now is, is creating that API layer and, and that back end to really support um, the complexity of all of these events and the messaging uh, from all of those events and being able to manage that in a meaningful way. Right. I, I feel like I keep picking on our industry, but it, it's, you know, the, the term API and web services really, really wasn't, tran you know, really wasn't apparent for us uh, five, ten years ago, where there's other sectors that have had this for a much longer time. So to your point, a lot of these big data aggregators, a lot of the new TMS technologies, they're leveraging these APIs. And I think 
a vision for us is to, to, to be behind that, that OMS system that I described is going to be that API or that, that, that EDI API hub, right? And like you said, some customers want to be able to log on to that portal and see the visibility real time. Other ones want, want that information fed directly into their system. So we, we will definitely offer both of those options. And it, it makes it easier for our staff too, to leverage APIs. They're much more dynamic. You know, there's still a lot of legacy technologies out there yeah. that people yeah. are using to run their supply chain. So, you know, we know that will be a leg up if we're able to accomplish that. Such an interesting take. Proactive communication is exponentially more difficult the more partners that you bring into the mix. So you really have to simplify it by adding in automation and centralizing your data in one place uh, so that it can allow for better visibility. That's something that is enabled by modernizing your architecture to give more access to real-time data and visibility. We'll tell you how our head stormers approach data science problems next. So most data science engagements, and this is more in a general sense, and we'll get to the headstorm application a little bit later on, it comes from building requirements. Uh, that's kind of the first thing here. So you've got to understand what you're actually trying to build and what you're trying to serve to someone or something. Once you understand what the project's about, you're going to get that data, you're going to acquire it, you're going to coordinate it, you're going to clean it. And then we go into this idea of like, doing data science, which is you build the product, you build the model, you organize it, maybe you do some exploratory data analysis, buzzword, buzzwords happen in this kind of phase until you get to the last stage, which is, you know, deploying and actually observing the results of what you're trying to make. And the big thing that I want to show off here is that it is an iterative process. And so when you finish one version of something, then starts the next cycle. It's like, okay, maybe I could have, you know, added some additional features to it, or maybe there's a new data set that comes out of this. We're consistently kind of improving the way we're doing things by having an iterative process. So how do we do that at Headstorm? So Headstorm has this process that was made last year and it's called the STORMS process. And each of those letters in STORM stands for something that uh, uh, sums up the phase of the data science process that you're in. So the first one is scheme. Scheme means that you're trying to understand the problem, you're doing client interviews, you're gathering requirements, uh, and you just get more from like a business or a domain perspective. Next one is take, where you start uh, getting the information into a testing environment or to whatever environment that you're a part of uh, in order to get everything combined so that you can move over to the next step, which is organize. And in Organize, you check for data quality, you look for outliers, you're making sure everything's kind of packed in together to make sure that your next phase is going to be very operable. So in the Organize phase, you're looking for null values, you're making sure all your information is there, and you're starting to tie it together for you to do statistical analysis. In the research phase, that's where you conduct your exploratory data analysis. A lot of people will call this EDA. And that's where you start doing kind of uh, larger um, statistical analysis. You're looking for maybe a little bit more of like the distribution of your data. You're trying to find relationships. You're looking for correlation or uh, but not causation. Uh, and then also kind of variance and covariance between your variables. This whole step sets up your next portion, which is modeling. And that's where you actually do what most people think is the data science work which is you're actually creating some type of predictive algorithm in order to output into uh, some type of measure that you can then use, uh, whether it's futuristic or you know, a, a combination of different aspects. And the last thing you wanna do is you wanna show, and that's you're broadcasting your results, you put your thing into production, uh, and you plan for the next steps for whatever you are going to do next with this engagement or this problem. Thank you for tuning in to the Headstorms Forecast. I am your host, Carrie Darney, along with Rob Kelly. We hope you enjoyed our dive into using data to address the driver shortage while bringing consumer level logistics expectations into the B2B world with Dan. You can find our contact information below. Feel free to reach out to us at any time. That's all for this episode, and we'll see you on the next round.